Hello fellow vintage Ray-Ban lovers out there, hope you're well. So, um, this video, as you can tell by the, uh, the headline, the description, is about Bush and Lum Ray-Ban Wayfarers. Now here we have a small selection of the different models that the Wayfarer can come in. Um, the first thing that I want to um, just mention, um, a bit of a caveat really, is that um, Wayfarers can come in uh, different lens types. I'm not really going to talk about the different lenses that can come with Wayfarers because it's such a big topic, it probably deserves its own special video, to be honest. So... What I'm going to talk to you about are the obvious telltale signs that you have a genuine pair of Bush and Lum Ray-Ban Wayfarers. Uh, so that will um, encompass the frame, um, you know, the shape of it, um, the colour um, and any other signatures that you may find on a pair of Bush and Lum Ray-Ban Wayfarers. So uh, let's get into it. And, um, and uh, yeah, that's it. So the first thing to talk about immediately that will determine whether or not you have yourself a genuine pair of B&L Ray-Ban Wayfarers is the shape of the frame. Um, with all Wayfarers, uh, that is the one thing that is always the same and is always a constant, which is the shape of the frame. You will never find two Wayfarers um, with a different frame shape. Um, that is just, that is, it just will never happen. So the top of the frame, if you look at it from left to right so if we start off from the left what it does it goes up then it comes down again down a valley and then back up again but what you need to realize is that the highest point which is the middle here of the frame is directly in the middle of the lens. The second point, if we look at the left hand side of the frame again, when it comes to the end of the top, it goes down at a 90 degree angle and then it goes back on itself and it follows the shape of the lens. I've seen quite a few sunglasses where maybe this point here has been rounded off so that it's more circular um, or where the actual side of the frame it doesn't go back on itself it's just a straight it's just a straight 90 degree angle you know so um, so that's one thing that you must look out for is is where the frame actually goes back on itself so that there's a little bit of a wing, I suppose you could call it a wing, on the side of the sunglasses. Another point that I've seen many, many sunglasses that are purporting to be BNL Ray-Ban sunglasses is the actual stud here. And here. Now what you will find with a genuine pair of B&L Ray-Ban sunglasses is that the stud actually, you have to look at it very closely, but it's not totally rounded. It's not like an oblong shape. It's not, um, it, you know, it's... 
the ones I've seen look very factory made. They're just too curvy. Um, they're just too rounded. What you will find with B&L Ray-Ban sunglasses and the studs is that they are a little bit rounded at the top, but then they have a sharp point on the right-hand side and maybe a sharp point on the left as well. It's very common to find uh, these studs where, you know, the fake lot, you know, they've just been rounded off. And it just, you know, that is not that is not what you get with a genuine pair. You will get a sharp point to both sides of the stud. So I've turned it round and once again, the stud shape on the arms will be the exact same as the stud shape at the front of the frame. It won't be rounded. It will be a little bit rounded at the top, but then the sides will be pointed. So don't make that mistake. Now, you, if you find a pair that has the genuine shape on the front of the frame, but doesn't have the genuine shape on the arm, then the arm isn't sh the arm doesn't go with the frame. The stud on the arm and the stud on the front of the frame will be exactly the same. Now, as I said previously, I'm not going to go too much into lens detail, as it is quite uh, a big subject, but the standard lens let's talk about these ones so these are just a standard gray gray lens um, you will get um, an inscription which is b and l and it will be in the middle so that's the middle of the lens it will be on the side in the middle it won't be up here it won't be down there and it won't be here It'll be right to the edge, right here. Same on this side. It won't be here. It won't be down there. And it won't be here. It'll be here, right on the edge. Okay. Now, sometimes you may see an inscription up the top here. So, if the inscription is at the top here, okay, it'll be in the middle of the lens. So it won't be here, it won't be here, and it won't be sort of in the mid, you know, in your eyesight. It will be quite tight to the frame, so it will be here in the middle. Dependent on the colour, um, is that you will see, if you can see there, there's a line that goes all the way through the arm. That is just the brace. That is a metal rod that basically goes through the arm. You should be able to see that. As I said, dependent on the colour. It's very difficult to see it on a black uh, models. Um, however, any other colour, uh, you, will, you will see that. Now, if you see that the, the actual brace in the arm finishes midway then once again it's not genuine all B&L Ray-Ban sunglasses the brace goes all the way through the arm it doesn't it doesn't stop midway it goes all the way through the arm next is the shape of the end of the arms basically the the, the ear stem as you can see here it is rounded off it will never be flat. That's another thing. It will never be flat. It will always be rounded off so that it can um, wrap around the ear and, you know, there's less chance of the glasses falling off your head when you lean forward. It will always be this shape. Dependent on the age of the wayfarer that you've got will determine the steepness of the ear stem and let me show you an example 
Here I have an early pair of wayfarers. Now, the ear stem is much more steeper, it's on a much more of an incline than the other pair that I showed you, which are here. You can see the difference? The white pair, you know, that is much shallower than the yellow pair. And the yellow pair dates from, um, well, it's pre-75. Pre-1975 is the yellow pair. The end of the arm, or the ear stem, will actually go in on itself as well. So it will go in towards the middle of the sunglasses. Okay, so now looking on the inside of the sunglasses, as you can see, we have the hinge and we also have some lettering on the side of the arm. So if we talk about the lettering on the side of the arm, first of all, with all b &L Ray-Ban sunglasses, or sorry, with all b &L Ray-Ban Wayfarer sunglasses, they will always have the inscription B and L Ray-Ban USA. That inscription will not be printed on you know it you know it it won't be like um like a transfer or a sticker it will actually be melted into the the plastic of the arm now with older models you can notice this because what they do on on when they first came out they obviously melted the inscription in and then they put in uh, like a paint into the actual lettering over time as the person wears the sunglasses that paint will fade and generally with the older models that paint doesn't exist anymore however you will still see that inscription has been actually melted into the arm so if it comes in sticker format you know, or, you know, you can't see any form of indentation in the arm, then either the sunglasses are fake or the arm is a fake. You must look out for that because I, I've seen so many where, you know, the, the, the actual lettering, it might be the correct wording, but it's not, it hasn't been melted into into the arm it you know it, it's not an inscription it's not indented into into the actual arm on the left hand arm it will have the inscription wayfarer now like the other side where it has the inscription b and l ray-ban usa the wayfarer once again is melted into the plastic it won't be a sticker, it won't be a transfer or anything like that. It will actually be melted into the frame. Now it might be paint, it might still have the paint in it. If not, then you will see the inscription in there without the paint. So next thing to look at is the hinge here. This is very important. This is the only hinge that will be used for a pair of B&L Ray-Ban Wayfarers. Don't think they'll come in any other hinge format. They won't. Absolutely not. They are always, always, always the same. And I can't stress that enough. You know, if, if it's been fixed and it's got the wrong hinge on it, then you have to look at other evidence. Personally, I wouldn't buy it if it hasn't got the right hinge. So, the hinge is a seven point hinge. The arm is one part of the hinge and the frame 
the front of the frame has the second part of the hinge and they interlock. It also has two studs to clamp it to the frame and it also has a flat head screw okay it will never be star shape never never ever ever will it be star shape it will always be for a flat head screwdriver the only exception to the seven point hinge are for this special edition Olympic pair of Wayfarers where in fact it is a five point hinge. It doesn't have the two studs mounting it to the frame but it does have a flat head screw not the, um, not the star shaped so they all have a flat head screw on the top. So I've changed the glasses because this one shows it a lot better. So as you can see, on most wayfarers uh, that you'll find, there will be a code on the right hand side lens of what model number they are. So this particular model number is B and L5022. So you may get a model number which is a B and L5024, like this one. In most cases, the Ray-Ban Wayfarer will always have the silver studs on the arms in most cases. However, in some cases, like this example, you may get the Ray-Ban signature here and here. Now, if it's a Wayfarer, we're not talking about a Wayfarer 2. We're just talking about the original Wayfarer. If it has this Ray-Ban signature, then more than likely it is probably a special edition or it, um, it's not a standard Wayfarer. So this model that you see in front of you is called a Street Neat Mosaic. And the Street Neat Mosaics have the Ray-Ban signature. Another example with the Ray-Ban signature is this model. Now, what you'll find with these badges is that the actual badge is cut around the lettering. Okay, so for instance, here I've seen some models where there's a big, where it's not cut into the section, it's just a square. Okay, and then obviously this bit is just black. That is not a genuine Ray-Ban badge or signature badge. The actual Ray-Ban signature badge, as I said, will be cut around the lettering. So it will go around the R, it will dip down over the A and the Y and the dot, and then it will come up again, up round the B, and then come down again round the A and the N, and then it will follow, it will follow the line of the lettering. Okay, so you must be careful about that. If you see one that doesn't follow the line of the lettering, then it's not a genuine, either not a genuine uh, badge or it's not a genuine pair of sunglasses. The next thing, you've got them in your hand. So you need to now look at the way the sunglasses sit. And in most cases, in most cases, the sunglasses on a pair of wayfarers, they will have a lean to them. So the lean will come inwards. It will come into the glasses. It won't go out outwards. It will go into the glasses. So as you can see here, the actual, it leans, it's, it's leaning like that. Not straight, but it's leaning at an angle. So if the sunglasses 
lean straight like so, I would send them back because they shouldn't be leaning like that. They should be leaning at an angle. Now, dependent on the year of the sunglasses, as I said, these are the old, the yellow ones. These ones are pre-1975. They have much more of a prominent lean to them. If I get another pair, which are much younger, like these ones here, okay, now they still have a little bit of a lean to them, but not as seriously. So that's straight. As you can see, it has a little bit of a lean to it, okay? So this is where when you get them, you won't be able to tell that unless the guy's giving you some decent photos. But if you can't tell the lean until you actually physically get them into your hand. And that's when you can have a look at them to see whether or not it has the lean. So once again, you've got them in your hand. The next thing is to look at the hinge point. Also, you need to take notice of how this point, the end of the arm, has been cut. It won't be, how to say, 90 degrees. It won't be a 90 degree cut. It will be a 45 degree cut. Okay. And it's a 45 degree cut on this side. And it's a 45 degree cut on this side as well. So when you open it. As you can see. It will be a nice join. Okay. So 45 and 45 makes 90 degrees. Okay. So the nose pad. Um, on all of the ebony models or the black models will be black and in any other color they will be uh, a, a, a transparent a see-through um, plastic nose pad um, I don't know why that is also it may look to the untrained eye that the <clears throat> nose pad is part and parcel of the shape of the frame but actually it's a separate piece and if you look really closely you can actually see the join uh, between the nose pad and the frame so there you have it folks I hope I covered everything uh, if you have any questions please feel free to ask please subscribe please like um, and um, and I'll hopefully be able to um, to bring you some more quality informative uh, videos um, and until next time thanks for watching peace